Okay, so in the last lecture we have uh, were discussing about the power series, and what we have seen is the power series with a non-radius of convergence, a n z minus z naught to the power n, n is say zero to infinity. This is the power series with a non-radius of convergence with radius say r, which is greater than zero. So it has a central z naught radius r. So, a power series with a non zero radius of convergence will always represents a function f z which is analytic. At each point inside this circle of convergence, at each point inside the circle of convergence. Now, even also if we uh, differentiate this term and we find the derivative of the function, then it becomes it comes out to be a power series again and that power series will be sigma n a n z minus z naught to the power n minus 1 and then n is 1 to infinity. Now, this power series will also have the same radius have the same radius r as the original one and the function f will be analytic function f prime z is also analytic. So, in this way if I keep on differentiating the power original power series 1 then continuously we are getting that successive derivative and each derivative will exist will be an analytic function inside the region of convergence uh, mod z minus z naught is less than r. So, this the converse of this that is if a function f is giving to be say uh, analytic then also one can find out the corresponding series power series. If the function is analytic then one can also find the corresponding power series and that is given by the with the help of the Taylor's formula uh, of this function. The Taylor's formula says Taylor's uh, series a series of the form Taylor series of a function f z is basically a series sigma a n z minus z naught to the power n is a power series where the coefficients a n can be computed with the help of this result the derivative of n at the point z naught divided by factorial n or equivalently we can say a n is equal to 1 by 2 pi i integral along the curve c along the curve c f z star over z star minus z naught to the power n minus 1 d z star, where the integration is taken in a counterclockwise direction along the path c, where uh, and this is our f z, where the integration is taken counterclockwise along the curve along the path c a closed curve c along the path c that contains is a closed curve that contains the point z naught in its interior in its interior and is such and is such that f z is analytic inside and on inside and on c inside everywhere and on c. So, this uh, is given by the Taylor series is basically a power series 
Taylor Schiller function is a power series where the coefficient n can be computed with the help of this results uh, or uh, f n z equivalent to this one f n z factor n is nothing but 1 upon 2 pi integral c of this where the integration is taken along a closed path c contained uh, which contains the point z not in its real, integral and the function f is analytic inside and on c. The remainder of this remainder of this series 1, this is 1 say remainder of the series 1 Taylor series remainder of the series 1 after the term z minus z naught to the power n into n is denoted by r n z and basically is the equal to z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 over 2 pi i integral along the path c uh, f z star divided by z star minus z naught to the power say n plus 1 z star minus z into d z star. Let it be this equation a n this is given say 2 and this one is given by 3 say. Okay. Now, when we write this equation uh, this function f z in the form of this series first few n terms plus the remainder then this form is known as the Taylor's formula with remainder. So, we get the Taylor's formula with remainder we mean a function f z whose Taylor's formula with remainder f z is nothing but f z naught plus z minus z naught f prime z naught plus z minus z naught whole square over factorial 2 f double prime z naught up to say term z minus z naught to the power n over factorial n f n the n derivative of this function at a point z naught plus the remainder term r n z where r n z is defined by 3 and this is called the Taylor's this is known as the Taylor's formula of the function f z which is analytic uh, with the remainder r n z. <laughs> now, as a particular case if z naught equal to 0, then this is known as the Taylor series with remainder center 0. If z naught is 0, then the equation 1, then the expansion f z which is f 0 plus z f prime 0 plus z square by factorial 2 f double dash 0 and so on is known as the McLaurin's McLaurin's series. So, McLaurin series is a particular case of the Taylor series when the center is taken to be 0 like this. Okay. Now, every analytic function can be represented by the Stirless series this is given. Uh, so, we claim that result which is the converse of the previous one what result says which is also known as the Taylor's theorem. result is let f z be analytic analytic in a domain d in a domain d and let z equal to z naught be any point in d and function is analytic in the domain d. So, obviously, it is also analytic at a point z naught in d. Okay. Then there exist the result says then there exist precisely there exist 
precisely precisely one Taylor series of the form one. This is equation one which is given with center z naught with center z naught that represents the function f z. the function f z. This representation is valid in the largest open disk with central z naught in which f is generating. Uh, this representation of course, what is the area? This z naught here this is a domain d. The function is generated throughout this domain d. So, we can expand this function or we can uh, corresponding to this function f z, we can always get a Taylor series expansion uniquely precisely one Taylor series corresponding to a which represent f z and the domain will be uh, in the largest circle where the function is analytic with center z naught. Okay. The remainder of this r and z is def defined by the 3 and so on. The proof we are not giving uh, for this. Okay. So, proof uh, we are just give, but how to find out the Taylor series. Let us see the uh, various example where to construct the Taylor series with the from the for the given function f z. So, let us see the example. Suppose the function f z is 1 over 1 minus z. Okay. We want the Taylor series expansion around the point 0. Find Taylor series at around z is equal to 0, z not equal to 0 or about the point z equal to 0. Okay. So, this function uh, f z is given according to the Taylor say if we go to the formula, the formula says a Taylor series of the function f z is of the form a n z minus z naught to the power n, where the coefficient a n is given by this f n z naught over factor n. If I differentiate this function n times then as usual we get the value as factorial n over 1 minus z to the power n plus 1 n plus 1 say n and then the value of this Taylor series around the 0 so z naught will be 0. So, f n 0 will be 0 okay. f n 0 will be 0 and then we uh, no f n 0 will be factor n not 0 okay, because this z is 0. So, it is factor n. So, use the 1 and one, once we use the for then f z equal to f 0 that is f z is equal to f 0 plus z f prime 0 z square by factorial 2 f double prime 0 and so on. So, if we substitute these values we are getting this is 1 plus z plus z square and so on. This is the Taylor series expansion of the function 1 over 1 minus z around z equal to 0. Similarly, if we take this function f z as e to the power z, then we know the derivative of this f n should be uh, e to the power z is the e to the power z whatever the and the corresponding expansion around the point around z equal to 0. Around, around the point z equal to 0 will be 1 plus z plus z square over factorial 2 z cube over factorial 3 and so on. So, so this will be the thing. means we can apply directly the formula and get the Taylor series expansion around that point, but sometimes we need not to apply we need not to apply this formula to get the Taylor series expansion of the function uh, just by using the knowledge of the binomial theorem or maybe some other method we can also write the Taylor series expansion of the given function f z. Because the result says that for a given function f z there will be a uniquely or precisely one Taylor series expansion around the point z naught in that circle of convergence. So, we are free to take up uh, any method to 
express the function f z in the form of the Taylor series. So, let us see the few result uh, example we are we, need, uh, we are not applying or we need not to apply that formula just finding the derivative coefficients a n with the help of the formula simply using some binomial form expansion or some other way one can write the expansion quickly. For example, suppose I take I say uh, that write down uh, the expansion find Taylor series expansion find Taylor series of the function 1 over c minus z in the power of in the power of c uh, z minus z naught where c minus z naught is different from 0. Okay. So, what we do is we write it first c minus z we write this expression in such a way so that one of the term comes out to be z minus z naught. So, if we rewrite this thing it can be written as z minus c minus z naught minus z minus z naught. Now, we want in the power of z minus z naught it which pose it integral power. So, if I take c minus c z naught outside because this is different from 0. So, what we get is 1 minus z minus z naught over c minus z naught inverse. Now, if we impose the restriction if mod of z minus z naught over c minus z naught is strictly less than 1, then one can apply the binomial expansion and we get easily the expansion h 1 over c minus c naught c minus z naught 1 plus z minus z naught c minus z naught plus square of this z minus z naught c minus z naught square and so on and so forth. We are z minus z naught less than z. It means this series converges inside the circle mod z minus z naught equal to c minus c naught. That is the region of convergence is mod z minus z naught is strictly less than c minus z naught. So, it is uh, this one implies mod z minus z naught is strictly less than c minus. So, this will be the radius of convergence of this series like this. Similarly, suppose we get another example where one can also use it. Say find the Taylor series expansion expansion of the function of the function f z which is say 2 z square plus 9 z plus 5 divided by z cube plus z square minus 8 z minus 12 with centered z naught equal to 1. <coughs> it means we wanted to find the expansion of the function in the power of z minus 1. So, what we do is first we will write the partial fraction. So, if we write the partial fraction of this function then the partial fraction will come out to be 1 over z plus 2 whole cube plus 2 over z minus 3. Okay. Now, since we want in the power of z minus 1, so rewrite this again in the form of z minus 1 plus 3 whole cube plus 2 over z minus 1 minus 2. Now, if I take 3 outside from here because we want the power z minus 1 positive power. So, 1 by 9 1 plus z minus 1 by 3 and then rest to the power minus 3. Okay. Then from here if we take since uh, yeah if I take minus 2 outside if I take minus 2 outside then what happen is minus 2 and then we get 1 minus z minus 1 by 2 power minus 1. So, we are getting this way is this uh, 1 plus z minus 1 by 3 and then 1 minus z minus y. Now, apply the binomial again. So, once you apply the binomial the value will come out to be uh, this is the same as 1 by 9 uh, 
and the series will be sigma n is 0 to infinity uh, minus 2 c n z minus 1 by 3 power n and this will be sigma n equal to 0 to infinity and z minus 1 by 2 raised to the power n that is all. Now, the question is what will be the reason of convergence now? This series converges if mod z minus 1 by is strictly less than 3. This series converges if mod z minus 1 is strictly less than 2. So, it means centered one with a radius 2 with a radius 3. So, if I take this circle okay, then at every point inside this circle the function is analytic, but it has a singularity at this point is it not. So, we get here means at this point and similarly when we go this thing it has a singularity at this point. So, as soon as comes the first singularity the region of convergence remains up to here only. So, the series 1 the expansion you can write it f z is convergent inside the region mod z minus 1 is strictly less than 2 and that will be the region of this convergence. Okay. So, this way one can find out the uh, uh, series power series of the given function. Now, <coughs> in this process when we say the function is given then what is the condition for the function to get a power series is the function must be analytic inside the domain d where the point z not lies. Then only we can expand the function f z in the positive powers of z minus z naught. If the function f is not analytic at the point z naught about which we wanted to expand the function then obviously, our Taylor series does not help. So, in that case we ha have to look some other series which will be responsible to have a representation of that function around the point z naught where the f is not analytic and that leads to the concept of Lorentz series. Okay. So, the Lorentz series is basically is a series of positive and negative positive and negative integral integer powers of integer powers of z minus z naught which can be rep represent which can represent uh, by which by which we can represent a given function given function f z given function f z in an analysis analysis in an analysis in which a circular ring be centered z not uh, analysis a circular ring be centered centered z not in which in which f z is analytic f z is analytic f z may have a singularity may have singularities outside the ring outside the ring as well as as well as in in its holes what is the meaning of this what he says is suppose a function is given and it is not analytic at a point z naught 
then we cannot express it in the form of power series. So, what we do is we remove this z naught and let us find out a region which is in the form of n plus we are throughout this region f is analytic f is analytic. So, basically this region is nothing but like this r 1 less than mod z minus z naught less than r 2 we have this is say r 1 and here is say r 2 this one. So, it is a analysis it is a analysis centered at z naught. So, function is analytic inside this analysis. Now, this function may have a singularity outside may have also some singularity here at the, ok. We are not bothering we are bothering about only the point where z naught where the function is analytic or not. So, if function is not analytic it means it ceases to be analytic at this point. So, the function that point is called a singular point. So, once the function have a singular point then one can expand it in the form of an uh, Lorentz series in the analysis which is of this form and in which the function will be analytic that series will represent the function in this. So, let us see uh, the, the result is given by the Lorentz and which is known as the Lorentz theorem. So, so, what this Lorentz theorem says ok the Lorentz theorem says if f z is analytic is analytic on two concentric circles circles C 1 and C 2 with centered with center z naught and in the analysis between them. analysis between them. So, function is not only analytic inside the number, but also within this C 1 and C 2 it is analytic ok between them. Then f z can be the then f z can be represented represented by the Lorentz series by the Lorentz series which is of the form sigma n is 0 to infinity a n z minus z naught to the power n plus sigma n is 1 to infinity v n over z minus z naught to the power n or if we rewrite again then we get a naught plus plus a 1 a 1 z minus z naught plus a 2 z minus z naught whole square and so on like this plus b 1 over z minus z naught plus b 2 over z minus z naught whole square and so on this one. Now, this series uh, consists of let it be equation 1. So, f z can be represented by means of the Lorentz series consisting of non negative powers that is first part first one and and the negative powers and the negative powers negative powers of z minus z naught that is known as the principal part principal part principal part of this function f z principal part the coefficient 
the coefficients of this Lorentz series are given by the integrals are given by integrals a n s are is 1 by 2 pi i integral along the path c f z star divided by z star minus z naught raised to the power n plus 1 d z star and b n s are given by 1 by 2 pi i integral along the closed path c z star minus z naught raised to the power n minus 1 into f of z star d z star let it be 2 this equation is 2. The integration is taken the integration along c is taken counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, C is a smooth uh, along C, which is which is a uh, smooth, simple, uh, which is a simple closed path C. Simple closed curve C or path C that lies that lies in the endless. and in circles and in circles the inner and and in circle in circles the inner circle inner circle is counterclockwise direction where c is a simple closed curve that lies in the annulus and in circles the curve that is the meaning if suppose this is the point z naught where the function is not analytic, we have the two curves one is c 1 other one is c 2 c 1 and c 2 the c is this curve c is this curve this is c which is which lies inside the annulus and encircles the inner circus C 1 like this. So, function a uh, f z can be expressed in the form of the positive and negative integral powers of z minus z naught which we call it as a Lorentz series expansion of this function. Okay. Now, this series converges the series 1 converges converges and represent the function the function f z represent in the open analysis in the open analysis say here I will take r 1 suppose and this is say r 2 then open analysis r 1 less than mod z minus z naught less than r 2, where r 2 will be as large till the function uh, till the function is analytic. As soon as it gets a first singular point over c 2, then we stop it. Similarly, when you shrink this c 1 and we can shrink up to that point, so that uh, uh, the function uh, becomes uh, uh, is analytic and as soon as it reaches to a some singular point then we stop it. So, that is the largest region by shrinking c 1 or extending c 2 the function uh, analysis can be obtained and where the function is analytic. So, that is what okay. now z naught is only singular point inside c can be shrink to a now there may be some others also. So, if z naught is a particular case if z naught is the only singular point 
say then c 1 can shrink to a point then c 1 can shrink to a point and in that case the analysis the analysis so obtained analysis will be 0 less than z minus z naught less than r 2 this will be the analysis and this one ok. Now, <coughs> again we see the proof we are just dropping because it's, uh, not time is not permitting for me ok, so, but we can you can go through the proof in the books Kirchhoff book we are following. So, see the proof of this, but the problems to find out the Lorentz series expansion of the function as I told it's, I have seen uh, in the Taylor series expansion that there are two ways either we can use the formula and write down the Taylor series expansion. Similarly, here also you can use the formula of a and b and compute it and then write down the expansion of the Lorentz series as given in the form of the 1 and from here one can find out the region of the convergence or without using the formula 2 one can also expand the function uh, uh, f z around the point z naught where the function is not analytic in the form of the Lorentz series. So, let us see the few examples where we can directly use the formula or sometimes without even using the formula one can get it ok. So, let us see the examples how to compute them ok. Find the Lorentz series expansion find the Lorentz series expansion Lorentz series expansion of the function say I say z square e to the power 1 by z uh, with central z 0. Now, obviously, the function z square e to the power 1 by z at z equal to 0 is not analytic, it ceases to be analytic. So, 0 becomes a singular point. So, what we do is we want the expansion of the Lorentz series expansion in in the uh, around the point 0. So, it will have both positive and negative power subject. So, z square is already given in the positive power, we will not touch it. What we do is we will write the e to the power 1 by z, but in case of the Taylor series expansion for e to the power z, we have already seen e to the power z is 1 plus z plus z square and so on. So, if we replace z by 1 by z, then one can easily write down this expansion without much problem. So, just replace z by 1 by z here. So, here we are getting 1 plus 1 over factorial 1 z plus 1 over factorial 2 z square and so on with mod z greater than 0 ok. This is analysis ok. So, what will the expansion will be z square plus z plus z uh, 1 by factorial 2 plus uh, say uh, 1 by factorial 3 z and so on. This will be the expansion varied in the region mod z greater than 0. So, this will be the expansion. Now, another example let us see develop develop uh, 1 over 1 minus z now one in non negative powers of z and second part is in negative powers of z powers of z. So, let us see 1 over 1 minus z we want the non negative powers of z it means if I assume mod z to be less than 1 then obviously, this can be written as 1 minus z inverse. If mod z is less than 1 then we can expand this and expand in the form of the series which is 1 plus z plus z square and so on this is the expansion of this series <coughs> if mod z less than 1. Second part is we want the negative powers of this. So, negative powers of this means we have to take z outside. So, if we take z outside then what we get it now again this will be uh, z outside 1 by z. So, take the minus sign outside 
we get 1 minus 1 by z inverse. And if I put a restriction that 1 over z with mod sign is less than 1, that is the mod z is greater than 1, then this expansion will be valid as minus 1 by z and here also this is the series like sigma n is 0 to infinity earlier series if you remember z n. Now, here what is the difference z is replaced by 1 by z only. So, sigma n is 0 to infinity 1 by z to the power n and valid is a. it means this expansion will be minus 1 by z minus 1 by z square and so on and valid if one mod of z is greater than 1. Okay. So, this way we can then and then let it be a b. Okay. Now, use this partial fraction. Suppose another example 3 is uh, write down the Taylor series expansion of the function find find Taylor and Lorentz series expansion of the function f z which is minus 2 z plus 3 divided by z square minus 3 z plus 2 with centered with center 0 original. Okay. So, what we do is because this is a, a fractional function. So, first we will write down the partial fraction of this and then we apply our trick. So, if we write the partial fraction of this, the partial fraction of this comes out to be 1 over z minus 1 with minus sign minus 1 over z minus 2. It means uh, this expansion around the point z 0 with positive and negative powers of z equal to 0, which already we have discussed because this is the same as 1 over 1 minus z plus 1 over 2 minus z. With 1 over 1 minus z, we have already discussed this part a and b. If mod z less than 1, it has a positive power. When mod z greater than 1, it has a negative powers of this. Is it not? So, we can get it for expansion. However, for the second part of this. So, second part portion, first part is done c a and b and second part for the second part of this if we write 1 of 1 2 minus z in the positive part of the power z take 2 outside. So, we get 1 minus uh, z by 2 inverse uh, inverse. Now, if we make the restriction mod z by 2 is strictly less than 1 then this can be expanded and we can write down the expansion again in the form 1 by 2 sigma z uh, to the power n by 2 to the power n that is equal to sigma n is 0 to infinity z to the power n over 2 to the power n plus 1 if valid if mod z is less than 2. Okay? This is mod z and if I take it uh, say z outside then we can say minus 1 by z outside then we get 1 minus 2 by z inverse and if we put the restriction that if 2 by z mod is less than 1 that is mod z is greater than 2 then again we can apply the binomial expansion and we get sigma n is 0 to infinity 2 by z to the power n and that comes out to be uh, series which is minus sigma 2 to the power n z to the power n plus 1 n is 0 to infinity valid for mod z greater than 2. Okay. Now, if we take uh, uh, now what we are interested in we are interested find the Taylor series and Lorentz series expansion. So, for this mod z less than 1 and for mod z lying between 1 and 2 because there are two singularity this function if I look the function f z here it has a singularity at z equal to 1 and z equal to 2 these are the singular point. So, what we this point these are this is the 0 this one is 1 this is 2 the function has a singularity. So, from 
this disk mod z less than 1 there is no singularity in it. So, we can write down the pub Taylor series expansion because there are no other singularity, but from 1 to 2 1 to 2 if I look then in this region the function is analytic, but it is an analysis. So, we can write down the Taylor series expansion over this again when 2 is greater than 2 again this is the analysis. So, it we can write down the Lorentz series sorry in this case we can write down Lorentz series expansion here also we can write the Lorentz series expansion. So, basically three reasons one mod z less than 1 we can write in mod z less than 1. So, what we get is mod z less than 1 Taylor expansion Taylor series because there is no singular point inside it then for 1 less than mod z less than 2 Lorentz series expansion and then mod z greater than 2 it is also an analysis. So, we can also write the Lorentz series expansion. So, let us see all the three cases what we get it. Okay. So, in the first case mod z less than 1 mod z less than 1 we have already discussed it here in the part let it be uh, this c and d this part is c and this part is d. So, when we take mod z less than 1 the a part if I look mod z less than 1 this expansion is sigma z to the power n, but for mod z less than 1 also available here in c. So, in c the uh, for, uh, the expansion is this. So, basically for this expansion can be given from a for this the expansion can be considered from the c. So, if I take the a and c. So, for mod z less than 1 use a and c and if we use a and c the expansion of the function f z will be sigma n is 0 to infinity uh, z to the power n uh, the first one is a source what this is our a yeah this is a sigma z to the power n uh, for this and then the second part will be for this uh, mod z less than 2 which is also mod z less than 1. So, sigma of n 0 to infinity z n over 2 to the power n plus 1 and this is valid for this. So, we get this series h sigma n is 0 to infinity 1 plus 1 by 2 n plus 1 z to the power n and if we expand it this will come out 3 by 2 plus 5 by 4 z plus 9 by 8 z cube z square and so on so forth. So, this is the Taylor series expansion Taylor series expansion inside the circle mod z less than 1 because this function f z is consist of two parts one is this other one corresponding to this we get this expansion corresponding to this we have this expansion inside the region. Now, for the region 1 less than mod z less than 2. When 1 mod less than less than it means this when 1 is uh, mod z is strictly greater than 1 the series 1 over 1 minus z has this expansion that is this part uh, this part has the expansion minus 1. So, we can get from a uh, from d and b b and d use this. So, from B we are getting the series uh, B and uh, sorry B and C because mod z less than 2. So, C is there B and C. So, B gives you sigma uh, this is B B gives this series sigma uh, minus sigma n is 0 to infinity z n plus 1 this is our f z minus this part and then c uh, this c will give c will give this mod z less than 2 it gives sigma uh, z n over 2 n. So, 2 minus z where is that uh, function function is this 2 minus z. So, it will give the uh, c sigma n is 0 to infinity z n over 2 n plus 1 
So, basically we are getting n plus 1 uh, z n over 2 n. So, and if we expand it, we are getting half 1 by 4 z plus 1 by 8 z square and so on so forth. Okay? So, this will be the expansion for this. Then third case for mod z greater than 2. So, mod z greater than 2, what are the possibility? The d is available and also here v is available because mod z greater than 1. So, use v and d. So, if I use v and d, f z will be written as minus sigma n is 0 to infinity 2 to the power n plus 1, 1 by z n plus 1 and that is this will be minus 2 by z 3 over z square and minus uh, minus 5 by z cube and so on so forth. So, this way we can find out the Lorentz series expansion of the function this. Okay. So, this is the way how to compute the Lorentz series. Now, let us come to the singularity which is also uh, singular points. Okay. Uh, a function f z has a singularity at a point z naught, a function f z has a singularity singularity at a point z naught if f z ceases to be analytic ceases to be analytic at the point z naught. It means if then the function is not analytic or different is not differentiable or function is not defined, then we said z naught is a uh, is a singular point for this function. And <coughs> so, if a function z naught is a singular point, that is, uh, if uh, uh, cease to be analytic at z naught, but at every point, but every neighborhood of z, every neighborhood of z naught every neighborhood of uh, say z naught contains point contains points uh, at which f is analytic so z naught is a point if i take any neighborhood of the point z naught then the function is not analytic at z naught but it contains the point where the function is analytic. Then we say z naught is a singular point. Z naught is called the isolated singular point. Isolated singular point if if there exists a neighborhood, if as a neighborhood isolated point, if it has a neighborhood about the point z naught such that f z is analytic everywhere inside the neighborhood except at z naught. Then we say z naught is an isolated singular point. Okay. So, we will discuss the Lorentz series expansion about the singular point which are isolated. There are all these points which are non isolated as a for example, if we take the function f z say equal to um, say tan z, then it is sin z cosine z. So, the point where the cosine z becomes 0 are the singular point that is z becomes uh, all the points plus minus pi by 2 plus minus 3 pi by 2 and so on these are all singular points. But if I take the ten of one by z, if I take this one, then this sequence as a non-isolated singular point, then it has non-isolated singular point at z equal to zero. At z equal to zero. So this we will discuss it next time when you go further. Thank you very much.